Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris, and today I want to talk about boot time on embedded devices. Specifically, we're going to be looking at the Meadow, but really this is something that is applicable to all embedded devices. Most people are very familiar with the boot time on their phone. Now, when you push the power button, it's usually instant on. But if you've ever shut it all the way off, uh, usually you hold the power button and select power off. When you turn it back on, the boot time on those is really, really long. Um, it's, you know, uh, 30 seconds, it'd be short in some of them. I know some of them are, you know, maybe even a minute. If you've used Raspberry Pi, from the time you power it up to the time that you can actually do something is a long period of time. In many, many applications, like your phone, but in others, boot time is really, really critical. It's critical for maybe operation or for uh, just usability for the user experience. Imagine, if you will, a, a digital dashboard on your car. Uh, the gauges are run by a microcontroller. So when you go out and you turn your key, how long do you think a user would be willing to wait for that display to come up and give them uh, feedback? Probably not very long. Three seconds, five seconds, anything more than that is probably going to start being painful. So let's take a look first at the boot time of a Meadow device from PowerUp. I have my uh, Meadow device here. This is a project lab, but it's got a Meadow Core Compute on it. And it is hooked up direct to power here over to my power supply. And I'll probably put uh, that video up here. And so what I will do is I will turn on the power supply and start booting it. And I'm a little bit slow on hitting the start there, but let's see how long this takes. The application will come up here and there will be a box moving back and forth and some text. Now, again, imagine this was running your dashboard for your car. You just turned the key 20 seconds ago now. This is not a user experience anybody would want. So, yeah, roughly 30 seconds or so to come up to boot. That is, again, not something that we want our users to experience. So, how do we go about going from this 30 second to, you know, the instant on that your phone has, or when you turn the key, oftentimes, usually within five seconds or so, you start getting uh, some sort of feedback. Often you've got an infotainment center on newer cars. Those take longer to boot, but they're still much faster, uh, I would say, than the 30 seconds we just saw. So let's take a look at how as a developer for a Meadow, we would address some situation like this. First thing I did was I did a little bit of a change here. I have a switch that is connected to this and basically it's just a rocker switch and on off and it is connected to one of the inputs on this. It's A1 here and it is pulled down to ground and we've got the other side of the rocker goes to 3.3. So basically, I've got a diagram here of what this looks like. So when the switch is open, this analog is pulled down to ground. When we close the switch, it goes high. So basically, we've got a signal that allows us to, uh, you know, go high or low. And this would be, say, in the automotive thing, your key switch. So it would always be powered from the car battery. And then this is switched power so that when you turn the key on or push the start button or whatever, this gets energized and sends power over to this A1. So what we're going to use this switch for is controlling what's called sleep. It's typically a low power uh, scenario for an embedded device. The device is not fully shut off. It just turns off peripherals and goes into a lower power sleep mode. Your phone does this, lots and lots of embedded devices do this. General theory is, so when we're running, let's say we're running like this and we turn the switch off. So this uh, input then goes to ground. What we'll do is we will be listening for a falling edge interrupt. And when it goes to ground, we're going to go to sleep. Then when we close the switch, 
turn it back on. We'll get a rising edge and then we'll wake back up. On the meadow, let's go take a look at the code for how we do this. So let's take a look at this. You'll see I've got this wire on here. I explained that I found a bug in the hardware. I'll put a link uh, maybe up in the corner or down in the description, somewhere around there to talk about this wire. But if we look at the code itself, you can see that I am hooking up uh, an interrupt onto A1, which is this line here. And so we're looking at a falling edge there. So that is when we go to sleep. And then I have the port for controlling the backlight is this Microbus 1 interrupt pin. And that's this one here. So I'm controlling the backlight with this pin. And then after we wake up, we're going to execute this. And so let's just walk through this from powered up going to sleep and then waking back up. So if we come up, we're powered and we power on the peripherals. Right now, powering on peripherals is just this backlight. So we power it on and we simply turn the backlight on. We also change the text that is up here on the display. Um, when it first comes up, it'll say a hello from boot. And then from that point on, it will from wake and it'll increment the wake count. We've got this after wake, so we just increment the wake count and we power on the peripherals. This power off is if it is a source that's not an interrupt, so this would be a source uh, of a timer. The way that it works with the STM32 is the maximum amount of time you could go to sleep is 28 days and then it has to wake up. So if I left this on my desktop for uh, 28 days, it would actually wake up from a timer and then it would immediately go back to sleep. So that's the reason for this little piece of code here. So when we're running and then when I click this switch, so you can see it says wake from boot and it's running, this box is moving back and forth. When it goes to sleep, that box quits moving. So code quits executing on this. And so what happens is that's this interrupt here. So the power port changed. So the it goes into uh, a low power state and it powers off the peripheral, which really just turns off that backlight. And then it calls sleep on the platform. It calls sleep with a the same pin and it says wake it on a rising edge of this. So now it's looking for a rising edge on that same pin where it was looking for a falling edge. Now we're looking for a rising edge to wake. And it comes back up instantly, but you can see it now says hello from wake and we've uh, come back to the wake state one time. I can, when it does this, we're running and uh, it's executing just as it was before it is back to looking for a falling edge so i can go back to sleep wake back up you can see it's gone to two and it continues executing here if we look at the power for this real quick so keep an eye on the value right here this is the current being drawn by the device so right now you can see it's around 220 milliamps it's jumping around from like 200 to 220, somewhere in there to run this entire system. So that's running the processor while it's doing compute. It's running the backlight, the display. There are actually several uh, different devices on here. It's important to note that this hardware is not designed for low power consumption. It's got like this USB uh, module here for basically powering it over USB and communication. This is just directly hooked up. So as I'm feeding it power here, that powers everything here, which would be unnecessary probably in a deployed uh, application. It's also got several sensors on here and IMU and things like that. 
I've not done any work to shut those off when this goes to sleep mode. So when you look at that number, what it's about to go to, don't go, oh my God, this thing uh, draws so much power. Why isn't it somewhere around five to 10 milliamps? It's because this has not been optimized for power consumption. I'm simply trying to show the behavior when it goes to sleep and wakes up. So if we were running, say, on a car dash, you'd have this for your display for your gauges, and it's on. When we turn the key off, it shuts off, and it shuts off the backlight because you don't want the backlight running while the key is on. Uh, it's going to draw more power from your battery, and it just looks wrong, right? The thing's constantly on and white while the car is off. So it's, again, a user experience you wouldn't want. If you take a look, you can see it has cut power eh, roughly in half. It's down to 100 milliamps. 100 milliamps on an automotive battery, that thing will run for a long time without any kind of problem. And then when I turn it back on, you can see it jumps right back up to 210, 220 milliamps. The general gist of what I'm trying to get across here is you are getting what appears to a user to be instantaneous boot, right? We're off, we're back on. It looks just like instantaneous boot to a user. It has that same feel, just like they're used to with a phone or anything else. It's not actually shutting off the computer and turning it back on. So using things like sleep-wake instead of a full power cycle is how you can improve the experience for the user on your application. That's all I wanted to talk about today. If you have any questions, comments, uh, ideas for future content, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.